Welcome to the locker room coming up on tonight's show. Is Paolo Dybala really not good enough to play for Argentina? We ask if there's really a case to be made for Brazil being better without Neymar. And France are among the favourites this summer, but do they have the right leader? It is a look ahead to the World Cup on tonight's show. And we welcome back to the panel. Andres Cordero, hey, good to see you. Hey, hey, hey. It's, been, it's been a while, and I have a feeling that in the third segment, we've got a topic that might get me not invited back for some time. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, yes. yeah. Let's see right. what that is then. But All let's right. start off kicking off talking about Argentina. Jorge Sampaoli has not included Dybala in his latest squad call-off, and having heard some of his comments regarding the player's exclusion, it doesn't look like he'll be on the plane to Russia either. Here's what he said when asked about the situation. He said, we thought Dybala was one of the top in the national team, but with the passage of time, maybe he hasn't been able to adapt to our ideas. He's struggling to fit in. He generates a lot of points for his clubs as an anarchist footballer and that's made him a big name in world football. Either we didn't understand where to use him and he couldn't adapt to our ideas, which are totally different to his club, we have to evaluate whether there are those who are better than him or if we have to strengthen Paolo. These are big words and it doesn't look good for Paolo Dybala's Argentina career. And they're big words about the guy who is arguably the best player in Serie A, who may not have a part to play on the Argentina national team. But can I say something? I think... He has a little bit of a point, uh, uh, San Paoli. I don't like the way he's gone about it. I don't like the way that he's put the pressure on the players as opposed to putting it on himself. And he seems to be deflecting away from his job, which is to make the best players fit into the best system. But mm -hmm. if Paulo Dybala is incompatible with Messi, where if you read between the lines, that's what he seems to be suggesting. Dybala needs a free role to thrive, and only Messi gets a free role. We don't expect Messi to be subbed out of any game at the World Cup. So if Dybala, if Dybala is a player who's not going to come off the bench and play alongside Messi, then he's not going to play at all. Why take but, up a roster spot when you only get 23? Well, but it's, it's a point about the roster spot, but I would look at it from a different way and say, isn't the whole idea of having a big squad for the World Cup that if someone gets injured, you have options? Now, Dybala is a fantastic player. Right. Cardi, great finisher. What if Messi gets injured early on and two of the best players on current form aren't in your squad? What do you do then? So why not bring them in and keep them as an Just option? Just because you've touched on Icardi, he also didn't put Icardi in this one, but did say that there may be options for him in the squad this summer, but he hasn't said that it's about It's pretty Dybala. smart. I agree with Dre, you know, and don't put it on, on the players, but I can see that I have excluded players. This is the under-20 national team, not the senior national team, because they were not good sitters, meaning if they didn't start, they were not happy and they affected other players. And I'm yeah, telling you, yeah. there's three or four big egos right now. He takes the gamble with Messi maybe may getting mm -hmm, injured, mm -hmm, but I totally mm -hmm. understand that. I don't know if Dybala and Icardi are bad guys, but we call them locker room lawyers. And I've eliminated guys that later became starters for the U.S. national team because I knew their mentality and their attitudes and that some players did not particularly like to be told you're not sure, starting today sure. and affected the whole group negatively. Listen, if I agree with him, he doesn't want to bring Icardi. You have Iguain and Aguero. So I'm okay with that. It's not a, if you want to take Messi and two strikers, right. okay. Yeah. Dybala, I don't know. People, like you said, if yeah. Messi wants to rest a game and Messi is yeah. injured, is fatigued, I don't know. You need someone that you know can change the game. So I, I don't agree with what he said that right. he hasn't played good games for Argentina, okay? No. And we've seen sure. that. Sure. But to say that. He can't play in the team. Yeah. We thought he was a top player. Wait, I wouldn't have said that. They, they should start together, which they've done before. So do, so do you they think should that start there might together. be something to do with Messi here? Because he's even said, San Paolo, he said, this is Messi's team. He said basically that they do liaise a lot with Messi on what works best for him. This is so where, does he have something to do with this This decision? is where I feel like he's taking the pressure off of himself, done the opposite yeah. of what you would expect the manager to do, <laughs> and put it on Messi, put it on Dybala, put it on Icardi, yeah. suggesting that either they're not good enough or they haven't adapted. And this is before the World Cup has even started. This yeah. isn't a post game presser where you're explaining a draw against Nigeria or whatever. And people suggest that uh, that jersey was well, heavy for just, Messi already. Can just, you imagine how heavy it is now? Just sure, to expand sure. on one point, though. If Messi goes down, Dybala is not the solution. If Messi goes down, Argentina's chances are shot. Are they really? Messi is the system. But you, you really think so with Dybala? One thing, he's, whatever, he's the best uh, capable of filling in, but not, not whatever, enough. One thing, whatever Sampoli says, he's not taking the pressure off him. Because he's got yeah, the whole country. Course, yeah. that if, if they don't win the World Cup, yeah. it's a disaster for this coach here. Yeah. So whatever he says, yeah. I, wouldn't have said, I wouldn't have said those things. I would bring Dybala. For me, sure. he can't play with Messi. So whenever Messi is on the pitch, he cannot play. 
okay? Because you need players that run, you need players ah, that yeah. have... I disagree. He, yeah. Okay, I've seen the games that he played with Messi, disaster. So I'm just True. looking what, at the games. Need a what? Great, sorry. If not bring him, I would yeah. bring him because, like we said, if Messi has a problem, he's a player that with fantasy he can change the game. Why not? Make the bar. You can't. You cannot. Iniesta of Argentina. Is his make him that, the that Iniesta. That, make him the first facilitator. Thing, first thing you can't make when a player is not to make. He has to play up front. Yeah. Okay, you're not going to make it. That's that's when you have a team that okay. play good. They don't even play good. They have a hard time but winning so games so these with, guys. So with that in mind, is there? We've mentioned the pressure, and you say obviously there is that pressure on San Paoli, but is there too much pressure and expectation placed on Messi's shoulders? He's talked about this recently. He actually was quoted saying, "Everywhere in the world, they're waiting for Argentina to be proclaimed champion, but I'm trying to live day to day and not worry about that." Good luck. Until well, what's June. The, what's the point I was going to mention is that as a manager, you want to bring the pressure down. I hear what you say about San Paoli being clever and putting the pressure elsewhere, but you don't want to do that. You want to take the pressure off because it is massive pressure and 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 I mean as a neutral I would love them to I'd love it for Messi because I think I think he deserves it but what also amazes me is that people have this pressure on Argentina because they think they've been a failure they've reached three consecutive finals I, most teams in the, in the world I mean Brazil haven't come close to that and no one's picking on Brazil and yet Messi and Argentina have been unbelievable they've been so close to winning any of those three and the Argentinian fans look back at it as failure. I'm like, where's the failure? I don't take, get it. Take Messi out of it, okay? Yeah. Ten Argentinian players. Compare them with most of the other teams in the world. They're pretty stack up, all right? Up front. At midfield forward. At yeah, Messi exactly. to the equation. Exactly. 2010, wex by Germany. Uh, 2014, didn't score a goal. They got to the final. They, didn't nil. score a goal for three games. But they got, got to the got final. In. Yeah. Okay, so it's lost, lost, lost. But they lost, got to three lost, finals. Lost. Okay, but good the, team with the best player in the world. Thomas, keep losing. Thomas, but you got the, the best player in the world, and you keep losing. Thomas, yeah, Ronaldo's one of the best. They didn't do much. They won the Euros, by the way. I was, in, right? Euros, I was way, in Brazil so. at the final. That like. When you said they get, they got waxed. It was a one-nil game. It was one. No, like, no, waxed like, by Germany in 2010, four nothing. Oh. Okay. So the team comes always but first, it wasn't a fight. and then the individual thrive. And it's not happening how, with Argentina. How many, how many goals did Diego Maradona score in the World Cup finals? I, I don't care. I don't Zero. Care. In the finals. Sorry. In the finals. Sorry. 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 Thomas, what's the, right. the logic breaks the, down? The, the teams that beat them were first and foremost a team and then some exceptional talent. Right. There's no team with a very exceptional talent that carries them a lot of times, but in the big games has yeah. not delivered. I, I don't agree. care what you say. Six big finals, no, I, zero. I agree, but when you're the best player in the world, Great. Okay. that doesn't count. It counts only that guy that counts. Okay. Because they want him to win this World Cup. So yeah. I want him to All win neutrals too. too. Absolutely. Yeah. He has a yeah. team, he doesn't have a team. He has so, that, that, that team has so much pressure because when you are the yeah. best player in the world, people think you're going to win. Maradona is the same thing. But to, it goes to, bring to, his to bring point. That, to bring that. Put more pressure on Messi now. So you leave it. You think you could. Back to what, what more pressure? He already has pressure. His coach from behind saying, you know what? We asked if there's too much pressure, right? There is exactly the right amount of pressure. Pressure proportionate to Messi's status as the best player on the planet. The pressure that Michael Jordan faced. The pressure that LeBron James faces, the pressure that uh, Federer faces, that Tiger Woods did in his mm heyday. -hmm. If you're the best player, the pressure is on you. And, 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 if you're, and if you're in a great player like that, you need help from elsewhere. And the one thing when I look at Argentina, great up front, three, you know, Di Maria's there, Higuain, whatever. But the moment you come to midfield, in particular in defense, yeah. there's no, there's no overattacking, uh, overlapping fallbacks. There's nothing coming from the center halves. You've got defensive midfielders who are not being in creative. So basically, basically, you've got a situation no, where, in my opinion, this is how right, it is. Okay. Uh, Basically, you've got no help from there, and you're relying on a couple of attacking uh, midfielders mm -hmm. and strikers up front, which is too much Messi pressure wasn't when there, you don't get help. And Banega might have been the best player in the field. What's the best player against Man United? How come when Messi gets in, all these players all of a sudden can't? He's so dominant, it becomes a negative for his because, team. I know are you saying he's bad but, for Argentina? Thomas, Thomas you yes. got you to have... His, wow. You gotta, wow. Okay. okay I'm, I'm, <laughs> well, listen, I'd actually... Listen, listen. Guys, he got so deep, he unbalances his team.
Come in. Both sides because he, 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 he created more chances. He gets the 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 space. He gets there. Thomas. He gets there. It's hard for players Thomas. around you to, to deal Let with that. Let me tell you something. Because when you play with the best players in the world, I play with the Bayern in the haven't. national team. I used to go see him play with Fiorentina when I was 14. After eight years, I'm playing a World Cup with him. I was training with him and I was nervous. I was nervous training. And that's not normal. <laughs> Training, I had the ball, I didn't know if I was gonna, supposed to give it to him, give it to someone else. If, I did, if he was by himself and I don't give it to him, he's going to tell me, yeah. you go nuts. You start, I'm sweating now. <laughs> Just thinking about it. So you're saying the other players are doing that but, because they're yeah. playing with Messi. Of course. Messi. That's right, what listen. I'm, so listen, point. this links Correct. on nicely to talking about Brazil. We must touch on them, focusing on them. Neymar's expected to be fit in time for their opener against Switzerland. But there have been a number of articles of late suggesting his national side would still be okay without him. And that's all right. But some have gone so far as to say they may actually be better off without him. And you've objected to that, Andres. Not just objected, but that's <laughs> absolute nonsense to say that they're better off without him. Now, now there's a case to be made that, for example, uh, when Colombia lost Falcao ahead of the Brazil 2014 World Cup, it took some of the pressure off. It's a big pressure segment, by the way, today. It took some of the pressure <laughs> off, and they played beautiful football. Uh, but Neymar is such a difference maker, not just with his goals, uh, his chance creation. He created more chances than anybody other than Carlos Sanchez uh, in the World Cup qualifiers across 18 games for Brazil. He brings the ball into the attacking half of them. He's their best assist man. He's their second best goal scorer. Sure, they can get by, they're good enough, but I think they, they get knocked off on that perch of absolute favorites to maybe like favorites B in the absence of Neymar. You think, you think so without Neymar? I mean, there's players they've got. Dani Alves on the one side, Marcelo, uh, the goalkeeper's very good, Allison. You've got the two center backs from PSG Gabriel who are Jesus. solid. Gabriel Jesus up front. William's been in wonderful sure. form as well. So I start to look at that and think that's a Brazil side that obviously with Neymar are better, but without him, it's still a fantastic team. Case, case in point. I agree with that sp statement too, where I also agree with the Messi. Messi came out and said, Neymar gone, we are a better team, a better balance. Interesting. Who said that? Messi. Go, go read quotes about Neymar, Messi, and Barca. That's can what I, he said. Can I have a computer, please? And, and that goes back to Paul Verde, the 4 4 2 more balanced. So, not necessarily being one of the best in the world means that you are going to be productive for your team. But I agree with Dre. I mean, Absolutely, with the numbers, the numbers sure. are, are, are there. It's interesting that, you, that people say when they left Barcelona, we become a better team. They have, hmm? elite, they have elite level talent, uh, even with, oh. with or without Neymar. Douglas Costa is brilliant. Yeah, they both, they both. Uh, they've got, on the bench, they've got elite level they, talent. They can win the World Cup yeah. without Neymar. But yeah. they're not better. Agreed. They're not but they're not better, better without Neymar. Only cuckoo people no. say okay. that. Yeah. That's cool. true. Cool. Cool. Right, still to come, who's Spain's best bet up front? Who's France's leader? And who's going to be the biggest bust in Russia 2018? Stick around, plenty to come on The Locker Room. This segment is brought to you by Modelo Especial, brewed with a fighting spirit since 1925. Welcome back to The Locker Room. It's time for the International Connection, brought to you by Modelo Especial. And it's Spain coach Julian Lopetegui who has one of those selection headaches, a good dilemma, shall we say. And this is if he actually plays a number nine. Now, Morata was left out of the recent squad. Diego Costa did receive a call-up. He also got Rodrigo and Diago Aspas as well. So let's make you guys the Spain coach. Who would you prefer up top? I want to Christian find out Vieri. from one of the best Diego strikers Costa over there. Or no, Alvaro I would, I would make Diego player. Costa play because he's been playing since January. He's been scoring. Alvaro hasn't been playing. He hasn't been scoring too much. I don't think he's in amazing form. So I would start with Diego Costa. Then, while you're there, you see what happens because you got seven sure, games, you got sure. one month, you, you decide day by day, you know what I mean? So you bring them all and then you see who's training. I would start with Diego because I think he's, he's more fit, more informed, he's always angry, he gives that toughness to the team and he's scoring goals. Yeah. Let's see what happens. And just to add on to that, he's your first line of defence. And I think because it's a cup game, or cup game, seven games to win the World Cup, you want him up front, you want him closing people down, it, getting in defenders' faces. Is discipline not a risk for them, though? I it's think just in a World Cup, it's just as likely to get somebody else sent down. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> I agree with that. <laughs> I, I, I would go with, if I had a trip with, with Morata, uh, Costa started five in qualifying, five goals, Morata five and five, Aspes three and two. The guy who goes is David Silva. Nine games, five goals, two false nine. That's yeah. the way you should play because you know what? That's Spain style. Costa can late, make some war, balls in the box, but 
They need, they need footballers mm. in order to get there. If it's down to Alvaro Morata versus uh, Diego Costa, I go with Diego Costa because it's not just the goals that he gives you. I think he creates space for other players. Yeah. The fact that he can hold the ball up in traffic, that he's an expert uh, dribbler, that he's got better distribution than Alvaro Morata does, where Morata is best either in the air or with space in front of him when you're playing the ball out in front of him. That's not necessarily Spain's game, and especially because Morata's not a regular starter for his club, whereas Diego Costa is, and he's doing well for Atletico Madrid. Yeah. But if I had my choice of all of the Spanish strikers, I go right now either with Gerard Moreno, who's right. been brilliant for Espanol, yeah, or yeah. Iago Aspas, who's the top-scoring nice. Spaniard in La Liga yeah. at the moment. Nice. Valencia, what yeah. you said, I well, agree, was yeah. eight years ago, when mm -hmm. you had Xavi, Iniesta, yeah. Busquets, yeah. and yeah. Hali uh, uh, Alonso. So you agree yeah. with the false nine from now? Yes, but yeah. eight years ago, with, with those with those players, that they hold the ball 95% right. yeah, exactly, of yeah. the game. Yeah. Okay, today they, 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 can, yeah. they haven't got the yeah. strength to hold it like they used to. Because the problem they've got, just looking ahead, Kay, their quarterfinal could be against Argentina. And they're going to need someone up front a cost to cause problems. If they win that, it's likely to be Germany. And if they win that, it's likely to be France or Brazil. Well, can you tell so me this, who's going to win so I can this bet? Spain, <laughs> <laughs> the Spain team, are better, they better choose the right players because they've got themselves probably the toughest run-in in the World Cup. And we've seen the troubles they've had in recent tournaments after such a great run with that golden generation. Now, France are among the favourites in the World Cup. Runners up in Euro 2016, one of the deepest squads in the tournament and one of Christian Vieri's favourites as well. But are they missing a leader? Is there a leader in this French side? You said one of the deepest. Take out one of the, the deepest team in the World Cup. Are they going to win? I don't know. Do they need leaders? I don't know. I don't see leaders there. I think the coach should be the leader because he's played in the national team for 15 years. He's won everything. There's no guys that you can say, you know, give him the ball, he's gonna, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. They don't even, when you watch them play, it looks like they don't even speak while they're playing. You know, you don't have someone that's telling them what right. to do. Yeah. So I think it's a team that they don't need leaders, they just need to, for me, not talk like Machudi does in Uber, like yeah. Allegri said, he's the best, he never says anything and runs the whole day. Right. That's what they need. Because today they was they were winning 2-0, they lose 3-2 when yeah. they start yeah, thinking the there. I think now. Deschamps is the guy that really people are going to look at. Because you're right, this might be on paper the most talented team. What is he going to do? And if he continues, yep. which he's done, Giroud is his number one guy in terms of starting. So a lot of people go, really? There's times that Mbappe doesn't play. Tovan, uh, Griezmann plays pretty much as well. Yes. And then a midfield three, Matuidi, uh, uh, N'Golo Kante. Correct. Yep. And then the third one, there's five guys you can put there as well. So for a coach right now, you're going, you almost hope three guys get injured. I hate to say it, because <laughs> then the choices yeah. become easier. But also there's a lot of youngsters, and that's why it would concern me that and, you know that they've got so much talent. You would think they're going to do a lot, but when they come up against the Germany or they Brazil, will, they will, Gary. They'll, they'll, they will. I think they'll crumble. Mbappe hasn't got the strength. But they just did the Euros. They were in the final yeah. two years ago, so it's always the same. It's all the same players. They're going to have experience. Yeah, yeah. Are they better they... side now than they were yes. in the Euros? Of course, yes. because you have two more years of experience. Right. Yeah, but now two they're playing the Brazils and Argentinas. They didn't play in the Euros. Gary. Yeah. We're going to bet. They yeah, will be ready. French, I'm having French. A bet. Let's go. Gary, Gary you <laughs> mentioned uh, Argentina getting to the final can't be seen as a, as a failure. Same goes for France. Getting to that final can't be seen as yeah. a failure. And the yeah. guy that led them to that led them leader is Antoine Griezmann. Griezmann, ha he's the face of the team. Has they to were be at home, though. The they were on home ground, which sure. makes, makes getting the there. The fear with French is that they're going to implode. That they're going to yeah. find a way to implode, as they did in 2002, was it, when they were yeah. coming back as defending yeah. champions? And 2010 in South Africa, didn't they? They imploded there as well. They like, sacked the coach right. while they were in the World Cup. Andres. What baffles no, you go. What yeah. baffles me that Giroud, out of all the forwards, yeah. uh, <laughs> has played more hey, sorry, again. more yeah. games yeah. than anybody yeah. else. Over Mbappe, Tovan, Payet. I mean, the list goes on of, of, of unbelievable players. He wants, you know why? How does he mix that? He wants a center forward up front yeah. that holds the ball, yeah. and you yeah. got all the other guys that go 5,000 miles an hour. They yeah. go in. So he and wants to hold the ball, you give it back, and they'll go in. Yeah. Very easy yeah. to understand. Yeah. 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 Also, yeah. I, I think if we're looking at a leader, a leader for the future, <laughs> Kylian Mbappe is, is a breakout star, and he could be the guy who makes the biggest name for himself this year at the World Cup. There we go. Fun predictions when we return. Which team is going to be the biggest bust in the World Cup? Stick around to find out what the panel think. <laughs> you ready, Bailey? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> this segment was brought to you by Modelo Especial, brewed with a fighting spirit since 1925. discuss the favourites for the World Cup, but what about those teams that have the hopes of a nation pinned upon them only to go on 
and disappoint. Which team is going to be the biggest bust? Gary Bailey. I'm going to go with Belgium because they're one of the favourites. They've got so many good players. Courtois, Lecoq is there, De Bruyne, Hazard. I mean, it's a fantastic team, so expect them to do well. If it goes according to plan, they meet Poland in the last 16, and Poland won't be easy, and, it, and then they meet Brazil in the quarterfinals. I think Belgium are done in this World Cup. You know, everything. Wow. Andres wow. Bardella, who's your biggest bust? Yeah, so I, I said I would say something that would get me kicked off the show for weeks and weeks to come. <laughs> our, our brilliant producer is Portuguese. Portugal are the defending European champions. Oh. I think they're going to be the biggest bust of this World Cup. Did you know what Cristiano Ronaldo did today? Oh. He is, he's brilliant, but he can't do it on his own. I think the way that they went about winning the European Championship is the sort of thing you can't really put all your money into because they didn't win games uh, really in the 90 minutes of play. Uh, they were very defensive, had to have a few uh, bounces of the ball go their way. I thought they were outplayed by France in the final, but they performed. They've got Cristiano Ronaldo. Okay. To me, they're going to be the bus. Wow. It was really nice having you on the yeah, show. Yeah, nice. 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 Yeah, the yeah, yeah. They're in the same group as Spain. They're going to finish second and face a big team in the quarters. Thomas Rungan, who's yeah, your biggest bus? I'm going with... Uh, as always, because every World Cup is the same, I'm going with England. Oh, uh, yeah. The oh, expectation. well, you're not welcome back either. The expectation, Harry Kane's going to be fit, so you have no excuses. You get through your group easily, because it's the weakest group you're wow, in, by the way, that's Gary That's something, Daly. that's something. And then you meet Colombia. Oh, you mm. might sneak by there again, and then Germany's mm. going to smack you. You don't get into the top <laughs> eight again. Bye-bye. <laughs> no top uh, eight. Uh, friends, leave, 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 leave. Go, some, go somewhere else. I think... Uh, I was going to say a team I changed my mind. Ooh. Belgium. I just think. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> wow. I'm going to say the team that he what was going to say. What did I say here? Russia you said Russia. Russia. Yeah, but I, ch I changed my mind. What's <laughs> the last one? That's what always happens this time. This is democracy. It's, it's, you can do whatever you I, want, Bobo. Belgium, I don't, I don't think they play as a team. That's yeah. all. Okay, so I will go for Russia in this one. As Fieri and I decide, qualified automatically, lacking competitive edge, and I just think that they're not Ooh. going to go. Can I change again? I want Russia one. like me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Anyway, okay. okay, he's got Russia. Are they getting out of the group, Jay? At least Russia? Russia? The yeah. first yeah. time yeah. ever. I don't know. First time ever. No. Okay. Will not get out against Africa. Chile this weekend. The Swedes denied Italy. Sorry, Africa, Christian. Yeah. A trip to Russia. Ooh. And Chile were one of the surprises to miss yeah. out to. Saturday, 12.50 p.m. Eastern on Being Sports. The extra weekend will wrap up all the friendly action for you. And we have our superbikes revving back into action this weekend here on Being Sports. So just because the league football stops, we don't stop. We've still got international friendlies coming up for you. Thomas and Gary will be with me this weekend on the Extra as we bring you more of that friendly action. And then we'll be back on Monday to talk about who knows what, but we'll definitely find something. Jay won't be back. Jay won't be back. Now the US is the bust. Bobo, read the text from Slatan. Hollywood needs me, he said. Hello, my friend. How are you? I'm going to see you soon.